Coco Golf concluded the 2023 season with a bang, reaching the number three spot in the WTA ranking, accompanied by a remarkable collection of titles and victories. Her achievements even earned her a Senate resolution for her US Open triumph. As an American tennis sensation, Goff reached her highest ranking yet, despite navigating through a series of challenges and setbacks. The real intrigue lies in the depth of her success. Just how outstanding was Coco Goff's 2023 season? In January, Coco kicked off the year with a bang, winning her third career WTA singles title at the ASB Classic in Auckland, New Zealand. As the number one seed for the first time, Goff played like a champion, breezing through the tournament with just 22 games dropped in 10 sets. Despite rain causing disruptions, she secured her second title on hard court, stating, honestly, a great week for me despite the rain. The first title on hard since I was 15. I'm happy to be successful on a surface that I love. While entering the first premier tennis tournament of the year, the Australian Open, with great enthusiasm, things didn't go quite as planned. Despite her reaching the round of 16, Yelena Ostapenko, the 2017 Roland Garros title holder, showed her skill by defeating Goff in a hard-fought match 7-5, 6-3. Now, despite the setback, Goff remained positive, acknowledging Ostapenko's impressive performance and admitting, there were moments in the match where I was getting frustrated because I normally can problem solve, but today, I feel like I didn't have many answers to what she was doing. At 19, Coco Goff boasts remarkable achievements beyond tennis, including a substantial net worth and numerous lucrative sponsorships, notably with New Balance, a partnership that began at the age of 14. In a groundbreaking milestone, she became the first female tennis player to receive a signature shoe, the New Balance Coco CG1, released in August 2022 with a vintage 90s theme. This year, she continued her signature tennis product line with the shoes Coco CG1 New Vintage, embracing a retro style. After a mixed hardcourt season in January, how do you think Goff continued to play? Well, there's no clear answer since her performance was a little mixed. In February, Coco Goff aimed to surpass her previous quarterfinal finish at the Qatar Open in Doha. Following a month's break post-Australian Open, she faced Veronika Kudermetova. Despite setbacks, Goff resiliently claimed the second set 6-3. A brief pause before the third set disrupted her rhythm, resulting in a 2-6, 6-3, defeat. Luckily though, in the doubles final with Jessica Bagula, Goff found some more success, defeating Yelena Ostapenko and Ludmila Kachenuk 6-4, 2-6, 10-7, defending their Doha title. At the Dubai Duty Free Tournament, Goff faced world number one Iga Sviantek in the semifinal. Despite Sviantek's straight set victory, Goff showed a strong performance, earning more games than in her previous encounters. Sviantek even praised Goff in the post-match interview. Coco is a great player, and I knew it was going to be tough. After that, Indian Wells presented a challenge as Goff fell to number two seed Arena Sabalenka in the quarterfinals with a score of 6-4, 6-0. Then in April, Goff achieved her second Miami Open doubles title, partnering with Pagula to make history as the first All-American pair in 22 years, defeating Fernandez and Townsend. Goff's victories are also bolstered by some high-end athletic sponsorships that enhance her performance on the tennis court. At just 19, she's a proud endorser of the American brand Head for tennis rackets, wielding the Head PT339.2 model with 18 main and 20 cross strings. All right, given the ups and downs we saw during the early hardcourt action down under, as well as in the Middle East and at Indian Wells, what's your take on how Coco Goff held it down on the clay court season? Well, let's start with the second premier tennis tournament of the year, the French Open. In a familiar clash with the world number one Iga Sviantek in the quarterfinal of the tournament, Goff once again faced a tough defeat in straight sets. Reflecting on her clay journey, Goff acknowledged improvements in her game, particularly in aggressive returns. Little points can always change the momentum of the match, and she takes care of the details well, and it's something that I do well too, but it's obvious against her I need to do even better. Despite the outcome, she remained optimistic, showing her determination to make a mark in doubles alongside Jessica Pagula. In that doubles, Goff and Pagula kept their partnership going strong, making it to the finals in both Madrid and Rome, though they ended up on the losing side both times. After an average clay court season without any notable wins, how do you think Goff did in the grass court season that came next? The answer? Eh, not so good. Goff's progress at Eastburn International did manage to lead her to the semifinals, but she unfortunately lost to Madison Keys. But what was even more shocking was her early first round exit from Wimbledon, a classy premier tennis tournament in July. 
the 19-year-old, who made headlines with a remarkable Wimbledon debut in 2019, faced an unforeseen defeat this year in the first round to qualifier Sophia Kennan. Still, it isn't unusual for players to struggle on that surface. Even before her Wimbledon loss, Coco Gauff shared that, I'm still trying to get used to grass. It's the toughest surface I think to adjust to because the season is so short. After her Wimbledon setback, Goff decided to change her mindset and her coaching team. Opting for elite coaching and guidance from renowned American coach Brad Gilbert, known for mentoring tennis legends like Andre Agassi and Andy Roddick, marked a strategic move in her pursuit of a successful comeback. So how do you think Coco Goff's hardcourt season in the US and Canada went after what happened at Wimbledon? That answer is fabulous insanely good. Coco Gauff had an incredible hardcourt run in the US and Canada, showing her prowess and making history. She began by winning the 2023 Mubadala City DC Open in Washington DC, claiming her first WTA 500 title and becoming the youngest champion in tournament history. Gauff continued her success at the Cincinnati Open, a WTA 1000 event, winning her second hardcourt title of the summer. Coco, champion of Cincinnati. With victories in Washington, Auckland, and Cincinnati, Goff became the first teenager since Caroline Wozniacki in 2009 to clinch five career titles. Her remarkable journey marked her as a rising star in the tennis world, achieving milestones at just 19. The climax of Goff's hardcourt dominance came at the US Open, where she secured her first Grand Slam title. In a dramatic final against Arena Sabalenka, Goff rallied from a set down to win 2-6, 6-3, 6-2. This victory not only made her the first American teenager to win the US Open since Serena Williams in 1999, but also marked a historic milestone for the 50th anniversary of equal prize money at the tournament. It also won her the praise of many tennis stars. Jessica Bagula tweeted that it was the cutest moment to see Goff celebrate her win. And several celebrities, including Billie Jean King and the Obamas, were quick to congratulate her. In a letter, former tennis legend Roger Federer even wrote, inspirational win, Coco Goff. I have been watching your game and following you for years. It's great to see so much hard work and passion being rewarded. You shine brighter than ever. Coco Goff's US Open victory not only earned her a $3 million prize, but also boosted her total earnings to approximately $12 million in the past year, including her high-end athletic sponsorships. Ranked seventh on Forbes' highest paid tennis players list, Goff's success positions her for even more exclusive tennis partnerships. Her authenticity, advocacy, and relatable personality make her a sought-after figure. Already partnered with brands like New Balance, Head, Baker Tilly, Bose, UPS, and Barilla, Goff aims to collaborate with partners that align naturally with her, leaving room for expansion into industries like cars and sports drinks. The US Open title was Coco Goff's only major win of the year, though, because things didn't go so well after that. Coco's incredible 16 match winning streak hit a roadblock in the 2023 China Open semifinals when Iga Sviantec ended it with a 6 2 6 3 victory. This marked Goff's first loss since the Montreal quarters and a noteworthy moment in her career. Finally, it was time for the 2023 WTA finals in Cancun, where Goff managed to reach the semifinal. However, Jessica Pagula halted her progress in an All-American semifinal, winning 6-2, 6-1. The loss marked the end of Goff's 2023 season. Coco Goff wrapped up 2023 as the WTA number three, a year highlighted by her first Grand Slam win at the US Open, solidifying her status as a rising tennis star. Alongside this landmark victory, she claimed in 2023 a total of four singles and two doubles titles, totaling 36 wins. Looking ahead to the 2024 season, Coco Goff aims to build on her achievements and potentially challenge the current world number one Iga Sviantec at the Australian Open.